All right, here we go. Tonight we are going to go over the Jamaican dogwood. Jamaican dogwood. Just like all these other herbs we've been going over, we need to find out which one is best for you, which one is best for what your problem is, right? So what we find out is if you have these problems or other problems or any other problems, that's what you have to figure out. If it's blood related, if it's lymph nodes, whatever the problem may be, that's what we're trying to figure out, right? This is what this is all about. We started this in trying to cure and fix ourselves. So that way we know what we need to take. We need to know what we should do. Jamaican dogwood. Now this time is a little bit different. This time we're going to go over the tincture. I like the ones that come in the bags, the powders, because I believe they are probably the best. But there's also peels and veggie tab peels. But this probably goes to your system quicker than anything, right? So this probably is going to your system quicker than the rest of them. The reason why is because it just goes to your, instead of going through your whole intestines and going through your whole body, going through everything, it can just go through there, if that makes sense, right? So when you do that, you know what's happening. You know what's going on with you, and you know how to take care of yourself. So the quickest isn't always the best, but sometimes, you know, that's what we need to take is something that will get to us quickly. With all that being said, we will start. And this would, just like anything else, we have to be very careful of what you're taking, what you're doing, know the risks, know the benefits, know everything about it. And that's why I want to tell you everything about it, right? It's just like with scriptures. you got to know the whole thing to know what you're talking about. So same thing here. This is also known as the Florida fish poison or fish funnel, Jamaican dogwood. Why? Because let's read about it. They used it to catch fish with. It is a tropical tree whose bark boasts powerful sedatives, anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties. So this is what you want to take for anti-inflammatory and pain. Makes sense, right? It is one of the numerous dogwood species common across the United States, and its bark has been traditionally used to treat a variety of ailments from persistent cough to minor aches and pains, but also for mental health to relieve stress and anxiety. A lot of things we see today. However, remember to always ask for medical advice before pursuing any alternative treatment in order to avoid side effects and potential medicine interactions. Also, Know that Jamaican dogwood shouldn't be confused with American dogwood, the corneas Florida, or the common dogwood, the corneas sanguinea, or the European cornel carnus moss, known simply as dogwood. Despite having similar names, which engenders great confusion, all four plants have specific medical properties, which limit their use to certain medical conditions. Mistaking one for another can result in failure to address a certain medical problem and even cause complications of existing health issues. So again, what we're trying to do is figure out what is wrong with you and what's ailing you and then correct it. Does that make sense? Trying to figure out what can fix you. So what is it? What does it look like? We just seen the pictures of it. It is a flowering tree native to southernmost parts of the USA, Mexico, Caribbean region, and South America. So the reason it's called a herb or herb or however you want to say it, the reason it's herbal is because it comes from the earth, basically, right? You can grow these. They are plants, trees, shrubs, berries, flowers, 
various different things that you can take. And the reason we try to take them is to keep the harm, harmful chemicals out of your body, the things that will hurt your kidneys, your lungs, your heart, all these things that will hurt you down the road where these have little to no known effects to your body, right? Now, some of them, the more powerful, the more you find the problems with your body and each individual different. So it can reach heights of 10 to 15 meters in flowers in May after roughly four years of age. The leaves are elongated and pointy dark green on top and slightly green below or gray green below. It bears clusters of white flowers tingled with lemon green and red pink, which turn into 10 centimeter long winged pods. It ripens in July and August, releasing oval red brown seeds. Jamaican dogwood bark is thin gray brown and numerous tiny scales. The bark of the root is the most important part of the plant, boasting several impressive medical properties. <clears throat> what does it taste like, smell like? Well, you can about guess with a lot of these things. They taste like dirt. They smell like dirt. They taste like earthly things but because that's where they're growing. That's where they come out of. All those minerals of the earth, all those composites of the earth, is that's what we're getting. But that's what makes them so special is all those things that you might be missing through your Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, you get right through these here, right? So it has a bitter, strong taste and fairly unpleasant smell because of the high amount of tannins, giving it a pugent taste. Eating it generates a burning sensation in the mouth. So you have to be careful with a lot of this, especially young and elderly, that you definitely need to know, you know, doctor recommendation, blood work, things like this, because just that alone can scare people silly, right? So what is it used for? It's roots and bark and leaves were used for fishing, just like we went over before, right? It has a sedative chemical in the plant, such as the toxin rotone. It helped the tribe hunters tranquilize fish, making them easier to hunt. The same toxins were later found to help manage several physical and psychological medical conditions Conditions in humans, namely insomnia, anxiety, and muscle spasms. So all these things that we see going on, instead of us taking a oxycodone or a, you know, very powerful thing that does more to your body, this can help with insomnia, anxiety, and muscle spasms, inflammation and pain associated with this and the arthritis migraines, even a cough and fever. I know a lot of these things sound too good to be true. And it's amazing they're not on the shelf of Walmart and other stores, right? Why can't we go say, well, gee, if this helps with a cough and a fever and it helps with arthritis and people that can't sleep at night, they have to sleep in chairs or certain ways in beds or this, what, and the other, and they're having muscle spasms, why not try this out? Oh, because my gosh, it poisoned the fish because it's scary. But have you ever read those four page, nine page, 10 page, 12 page, 20 page reactions of the peels the doctor gives to you? The root bark is part commonly used for medical purposes, but only under the careful supervision of a healthcare provider or a professional so you can avoid possible side effects. And this is what it looks like these are the different flowers this is what the bark looks like this is what you're getting right so another thing we need to find out is if we quite quite possibly can who are we getting it from and if you have bought these things before you know a lot of people go online and they find oh wow it says organic oh wow it's really expensive oh wow but if you haven't tried it before, if you haven't tried the people who sold this to you before, then how do you know what you're getting? So you have to be careful because some of these things, especially the tinnitures, have water, alcohol, 
rice, all these other things that they become fillers and you may be getting this much water, right? You might be getting half. And this is where a lot of people, I think, try these things and they go, gee, it didn't work because they got alcohol or they got water or they got something other than what they were supposed to be getting. Find out below what are the top five uses. What is it? A strong sedative. Special chemicals and some toxins in Jamaican dogwood root bark boast strong sedative properties. When taken in small amounts, the tinctures and extract of the bark help treat insomnia. Those nights when you really just need to sleep, here it is, right? Or the common sleeplessness as well as nervous tension. We see a lot of that today. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of things that our, mind, our, our minds just won't slow down. It just, you lay there and you think of everything that you should have done today, yesterday, and tomorrow, right? And then don't forget next week. And don't forget this. And don't forget this is coming up. And don't forget all these other things. So if we're not careful, we do what? We are sitting there thinking for hours and we don't get the right rest we should and wonder why we have the life that we live. We wake up tired. We go to bed tired. We feel ooky all day because we're not getting the things that we need. We're not doing what we should be doing. We're not treating our bodies right, right? You pour water in your gas tank, your car's probably not going to like it. Your truck ain't going to perform just like it should, but we pour junk in our tanks all the time. And what happens? It comes back to get us. The same sedative compounds in Jamaican dogwood root bark help relieve anxiety and stress, promoting both relaxation and sleep. However, if you are currently receiving anti-anxiety medication, talk to your doctor first before resorting to any herbal-based remedies as plant often interact with conventional medication. And of course they do. Anything that's medicine reacts with some other medicine, right? So if you take this with something that's anti-PTSD or whatever it is, Prozac, whatever you might be taking, if you're taking this, you can't take them together. That's the whole point of these is not to take those, right? The whole point to transfer to something like this is your body doesn't necessarily want this for the rest of your life. And it doesn't pose more hard times and more depressive times right? It's amazing that some of these things that people take, it says it causes suicidal thoughts, suicidal this. Well, gee, why would you take something for anti-depression that's going to make you have terrible depressive thoughts, right? So taking this bark preparations reduces painful stomach cramps caused by muscle spasms at the level of gas intestinal tract, as well as pain associated with inflammatory, inflammatory conditions such as arthritis and rheumatism. You know, what it is with the weather, or whatever, but the hands and the feet and the legs and the back and all these things add up. So this may be a very good one for you. Powerful pain relieving properties. You're making dogwood root bark both strong and adjusting properties. As a result, it helps relieve headaches, migraines, stomach aches, and muscle pain, but should only be used under the careful supervision of a medical professional. Relieves cough and reduces fever. Apparently, Jamaican dogwood bark can help treat cough and reduce fever due to its strong antipasmodic and anti-inflammatory action. So a lot of times what happens is your lungs and when you have these infections or have these things, your lungs start having a problem as well. So this may help with that as well. So you have the different types and available forms, right? You have the bark, you have the tincture, what you see here, the tea, smart bark pieces, biological active compounds in the bark include ronotone responsible for the sedative, the pain relieving action of the plant. Isoflavones, which influence hormone metal metabolism. Tainies, responsible for the mouth, burning sensation, possible irritation, and estrangement activity of the plant. 
So, do you give it to your dog? I don't know. Does he have arthritis? A lot of these things you can give to your animals, but you, again, have to be very careful because if you give them too much, it could cause more problems, right? So you have to be careful with all these. They're actually medicines, folks. These have been in Chinese, Japanese, all around the world. They've been used for thousands of years. And they treated these as medicines and still do. So you can't just take this stuff and down it. Like, even if you're an alcoholic and you take a shot or this, a lot of people get this stuff and they get the knowledge and they hurt themselves because, oh, I can take a shot of whiskey, so that ain't going to do nothing to me. And they end up either at the hospital or sick or throwing up or with more problems than they started with because they knew more than everybody else, right? So you have to be careful with these things. You don't just down them and say, I'm going to try it out. And I would submit to you that's probably why you can't buy them on the shelves. That's why you can't just go pick them up anywhere because... People have probably tried it, and then you have your doctors and people saying, well, gee, that's why they can't buy it, right? So when taken under the careful supervision of a healthcare professional, dogwood root bark is fairly safe for consumption. It's self-medicating. You risk overdosing and suffer any of the following side effects, irritation, numbness, tremor, sleepiness, drowsiness, sedation, Sweating, potential toxicity, Jamaican dogwood will interact with any medications, right? Anything that you're taking, Zopalim, Lorsepam, all these medications, if you're taking something, then please, please go find your blood work, find your doctor, and make sure that they work together. So again, this is not for you to add to. This is for you to hopefully get off of other things are to try something that's not as bad for you, right? Do not give to children and elderly. These age groups are highly sensitive to the plant and may experience side effects as a result. Do not take dogwood if you're pregnant or nursing. It may cause uterine contra contractions, miscarriage. Avoid using Jamaican dogwood if you are undergoing surgery. It may interact with the anesthesiac, the stuff that they give you, right? Or if you are prescribed sedatives, it enhances their effects. Avoid self-medication and use Jamaican dogwood only under the supervision of a healthcare professional. Because research is poor, there is currently no recommended dose, and as a result, dosage will establish by your doctor according to the age existing medical issues, risk factors, and overall state of health. So again, any of these things that we're taking and we're doing, we have to know what we're doing. And you can do like anybody else. You can look at the back of it. it usually comes with recommended dosage, or you can look online and get your recommended dosage. But again, with this, as all of them, whatever the recommended dosage, I would say take even less. That way, if your body does go into a deep sleep, if you go into something, you know what you're doing, right? The next night, the next night, whenever, next time you have a problem, you know kind of what happens. Instead of just sipping it down, that's about enough, right? You ever do that with, what's that stuff, that pink stuff? Pepto-Bismol, you just take a little bit, and ah, that's about enough for today. Nah, maybe another, that. Ah just a little bit more, because you're not that worried about it, right? These things, again, are ancient Chinese medicine. They're ancient, ancient medicines that the ancients used, and they had, and they knew. And for some reason, we don't, or we don't know a whole lot until we start researching and finding them, buying them, trying them, and doing things with them. So, it is fairly safe for consumption as long as you take some precautions to ensure the proper dosage and avoid side effects. Medication. Again, if you're taking any other medications, then you know there's a potential risk. A medical professional can help you find the right dosage and thus manage painful conditions such as arthritis, rheumatism, relieve muscle cramps and spasms, reduce, reduce anxiety, 
treat sleep problems, and so on. So again, if you're going to use this, make sure, like with anything else, that you know what you're getting yourself into. But this is mainly just like a lot of scriptures, right? This is for the people that want to hear, that want to use this for an alternative to going to, say, doctors and, and spending money that way. And I'm not by any way condoning. I'm just saying use these things knowingly, sparingly, as they are supposed to be. You take, and the whole point of this is to have people know there's things out there. There's things out there that, you know, just like this, maybe carry it in your backpack once you know what you're doing with it. You can carry that in your backpack. Don't get the glass bottle. Get the plastic bottle. I know plastic, but that way, if you throw it down or you're doing something, you're out on a camping trip, you have a foot ripped open, something happened, this may be able to help you. It may be able to get you something and help also with, you know, the problems that come with that bacteria, different things like that. So all these, again, are something to help people to know and have information. Knowledge is power. And the more knowledge we have is the more power we have. You know, it, it's amazing to me that people have diseases and problems and they know nothing of them. Nothing. They they don't even research what's wrong with them. They They go to a doctor and the doctor tells them you have this, and they say, okay. And the doctor says, this is what you're going to take. And they say, okay. And they don't have a clue. They don't know their PET scan, their CT scan, their blood work. They don't have a clue of what's going on with them. All they know is the doctor says, well, it's between 11 and 12, so it looks good to me. And look, this chart says that. And they're so people. But if we would take health serious. And we would take our health as serious as what we do when we get older and find out there's a problem. We might have a different, healthier lifestyle. We might be able to live longer, look better, feel better, and taste what we eat as opposed to walking around like a bunch of zombies banging our head on the doors and saying, uh, blah, 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 and all these babble commercials, right? So the thing about it is, again, this is to help. And if you have any questions or comments, by all means, get a hold of us. Then again, we're not a PhD. I'm not a herbalist. I don't have certificates. And we're definitely not selling anything. You can go on eBay, Amazon, or find, you know, your local providers. But preferably, you probably got to go overseas, Sri Lanka, India, different places to find the good stuff and find not just this, but some of the other ones, you know, to find the the biggest thing is the purest form, just like anything else, the purest form, and that will help you better than anything. If you get it watered down, if you get it alcohol, I mean, you know, if this is more than half full of water, then you're drinking water. Why are you buying something that's water? You know, it may say distilled water, it may say, you know, whatever, but if it's not pure as you can get it, and that's why I like, again, the powder form, because usually they are a powder of the bark or powder of the flower, the different colors of different things, right? And then you know what you're getting, and you can also turn them into pills. So any questions or comments? If not, we are going to close it down. And if it's on the YouTube, for some reason, I don't see any comments. So we're thinking about going to another platform here before long so I can see and read those comments. But if that is all, then we are going to call it a night. I grant you a shalom. May Yahweh bless you. May you have a great and wonderful evening. If you have, again, any questions or comments or would like to know more about these, then please get a hold of us.